wanting to make a troubleshooting video for a long time. We're finally getting around to it. Yeah, people have trouble. Well, we've had a lot of time to prepare now because you know something about trouble. I know nothing about trouble. I've had to shoot a lot of trouble since since you've come into my life. That is not me. It's <laughs> coincidence. <laughs> so first we want to just focus on armatures specifically. Um, just it's a constant revolving door of questions and problems um, regarding wrapping wire, proportions, uh, what I what do I do if a leg's too long or if a leg's too short? So, um, oh, and then wire gauge. So we're gonna try to just answer some of those most common questions in one very entertaining video, right? Yes, I do not have an armature. Right. It might have been helpful, <laughs> just saying. You have a little bit of armature, did you know that? Uh, no. In your left hand. Oh my. <laughs> That's why it can do this. Oh. <laughs> Could you put that down? And <laughs> Don't be naughty. <laughs> Alright, we should get started. Okay, so we have several um, armature tutorials already. For each, um, almost every tutorial, there's an armature. And then we have a figure armature. And one of the first videos we made, actually, it may have been the very first video we made, was building a small armature. So I'm not going to go over how to make an armature, um, but I want to talk about gauges and what you might need. I use um, pipe cleaners for two things. I use them for little ornaments, so something under four inches. And then I also use them as um, kind of a wool grabber around my wire armature. So that's just a matter of wrapping pipe cleaner around an aluminum armature. The 22 gauge wire, which is a floral wire and it's covered in white cloth, I use for figures about six inches and under. Um, it works really well for little bunnies and um, sometimes they make mice out of them. So that's what kind of the size range because they come in 18 inch length so you can't you can't do anything bigger than six inches you don't have enough wire and nor would you really want to because as you get bigger you need a stronger wire than this we also have the um, the 26 gauge and the higher the number the, the thinner the wire so the 26 gauge is good for um, making the little fingers so that's what I have that on hand for. Most armatures under six inches at the shoulder, like this, I don't even know what this is gonna be, a sheet maybe, perhaps, um, or a goat. I use the 14 gauge wire. It's, this is my most used um, armature wire. It's just, it's just a nice gauge for all, almost all the average size things that I make. I think actually this reindeer which is six inches at the shoulder, is also made with 14 gauge. Um, in this case, the armature is a little bigger, but it works out well because of making cloven hooves, he has a double wire in the legs. So it just gives him extra support as he gets bigger. If I go much bigger than this, I'm gonna switch to 12 gauge. Um, it's a little thicker, a little stronger, and as your sculpture gets bigger and bigger, you need that. And it's hard, it's difficult to have the foresight to know, what, especially when you're kind of going out there making something bigger than you've ever made before, um, what, how much armature you need. The wolf that I made um, is about the size of Milo's, about 12 inches at the shoulder, 14 maybe. And I used a double wrap of 12 gauge. The lion head, which, I don't know, you may be able to barely see behind me. Um, that was multiple strands of nine gauge, which is even thicker. I don't usually carry it because it just, don't use it that often. So the wire is important. Um, how you twist the wire is important. So using your finger and your thumb to get a real consistent, even twist. If you twist um, one wire, 
around the other without them both intertwining. So that would look like, um, that would just be one wire. And you may be thinking that you're doing both, but really what happens is one ends up going around the other. And that gives you uneven legs because one wire has done all the work. And it also doesn't lock your wire together. If I twist incorrectly, I can pull one wire right out of the other one. So you don't have a strong armature. Um, that's just, that's one important and e but easy to correct right from the start, you know, making sure that you twist evenly. Um, let's see what, I have a little cheat sheet here because there's so much to say. I want to make sure that I'm saying it all. Okay, proportions. Um, there's no just magic formula for every animal. They're all, they're all different. So whenever I make something, especially something that I'm unfamiliar with, I Google images, use Google images to find the skeletons. And I look at the skeletons and just with my eyeballs I measure, I you know, you could, some people have said that they'll print out a picture and then um, get it the size they want and hold their armature to that. That's a great, that's a great idea. Um, but I look for things relative to each other. So this is going to be a reindeer and I look at a reindeer and I try to look at the skeleton and decipher, you know, is their legs and back make a square with the ground? And that gives me, okay, I know I want the back about six inches long and the legs about six inches long. Um, if you're making a dachshund, you're going to have, you know, a three inch long back and a, a one and a half inch long leg. It's, you just have to go from animal to animal. So to help with this, uh, we've created some reference charts and I have a whole list of animals and I'm working through them. Um, this is the dog one. And I just make notes um, on the reference chart of helpful, um, you know, proportions and lightly sketched in, in most of the animals. You can kind of see the armature sketched in there. So, and then um, it goes into more detail for sculpting. But so the reference charts are helpful. Google images is helpful. On our video page, our tutorial page of our website, under each tutorial that we have, we've written the wire lengths. So that's helpful if you're wanting to make it the same size that I am. So um, that's there. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in terms of proportion that I can say. It's just, it's really a matter of studying the animal that you're making um, and figures too. Our figure. Uh, reference sheet like this is really great because I actually broke down everything for uh, a 12 inch figure which is what this is and this uses the 14 gauge wire. So uh, getting the portions, proportions correct when you're working with an armature is really important because if you're trying to make a realistic animal that's you know that's their skeleton it's key. So that brings us to um, a couple of issues that you might have once you've sorted all that out and you've made your armature um, like this one I can tell that my front legs are slightly different so I have two options one is to lengthen one short leg the other is to shorten the long leg well if I shorten the long leg I'm afraid his front legs are going to get too short so, can you see this, Milo? Ah. Not when it falls down. <laughs> that. I, I know you're looking for an answer, and okay, let's yes, zoom, let's I zoom think, in. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay, that is better. Okay, good. So rather than cut the long leg, well, let's just say I wanted to do that. I would take my pliers and open this back up cut a little bit back off and then fold it back to match this one. But instead I want to lengthen this leg a little bit and I don't really have enough wire to do that. I've, so that's one possibility if you have enough wire is to open it up and just make it longer um, by folding it 
back a little longer, but I don't have enough wire to do that. And the technique I'm going to show you, you can also use pretty well on the face. So you've made your whole armature and as you, as you look at it closer, you realize, well, my neck is too short. So you're going to lengthen the neck, which in turn, now it looks like an alpaca, um, makes your head smaller, so you need to lengthen the head. And so we're just going to cheat it longer with the pipe cleaner. His head and neck were actually fine, so we're going to put it back. So I would wrap down my leg just like I normally would with my pipe cleaner. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to get that little extra length out of there by folding it back, you know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch out from the end of the um, of the aluminum wire and then I'll cut that and just give it a little wrap right here and cut the extra off. So now my legs are even. This one's going to get wrapped in, the whole thing's going to get wrapped in pipe cleaner. And if I wrap this real tightly with the wool then it, it'll be nice and secure. It's really not that big of a deal. You can't do too much longer then a quarter to half an inch um, with the pipe cleaner because then it's going to start to not be as structurally sturdy as the aluminum wire. So that's how to get a little a bit of extra length out of something. All right, a couple, just a couple more points, a little bit back to um, proportion and also one thing that I see happen a lot in the classes is at the ends of the wire you really want to fold the wire back on itself in half unless you're for some reason you need a big loop like um, on the on the figure we've got sort of a loop to create the broadness of the ball of the foot and then a loop um, because we're creating the palm of the hand but on the animals where you're going to have tiny little hooves or um, you know, tiny little feet, you really want to just fold the wire back, basically in half, back on itself. And then when you're creating um, your animal and you're looking at your proportions, you're going to look at the bones and where they bend. So in a wire armature, we don't have any fixed, you know, rigid bones. It all bends. So it's your job as the creator to figure out okay, how can I create my armature to mimic the bones? Um, he's got a long leg over here. i got to fix this legs. So you can kind of take them, get them lined up, and I can see that. You can see that. This leg's a good half to three quarters of an inch longer than, than this one. So I'll fix that um, by unfolding the wire, cutting it, and then refolding it. So usually a four-legged animal has a knee, which is their, their stifle, and that's usually I create that with a soft bend um, using my thumb. And then their hock, which is really actually their ankle or the back of their foot, is a sharper, a sharper um, bend, bringing the, the wire back forward towards the front of the animal. And then the elbow is a sharp, a sharp bend as well. Depending on the size of your armature, you're not going to get super complex with shoulder blades. I rarely do shoulder blades unless I'm making something really big. Same with the pelvis and a rib cage. Those are all things that you can add if you just get, you know, so big that you need those to stay accurate. Reindeer carry their head low, so this little hump here actually helps create their, their shoulder blade or their withers. And then I've just got a little bend to show, you know, this is where his neck ends and this is where his head begins. So do you think that helped anyone? I hope so. You have a lot of information, lady. I know. We've, we've come a long way since we have done um, this type of tutorial. You yes. know, so we have a lot more information, a lot more resources, a lot more products um, to discuss. So thank you so much. I hope you got some help out of that and um, you're going to make excellent armatures.
Bye. See ya.